Hey there, good people of YouTube. Happy Sunday to you guys. Hit the like for me and say hi in the comment section. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about a hot stock that I'm looking at buying early Monday morning. So make sure you don't miss that. So I've talked with you guys about this before, that according to the Stock Traders Almanac, October is a historic bear market killer month. 12 bear markets have been slayed in the months of October. And when you coincide it with a midterm election, the returns are even higher. Now, I made a bullish case in my last video when I was covering the S&P 500, and I was comparing it against the 2008 Great Recession. That's when the markets fell approximately 50% in value from their all-time highs. And if you compare that to where we're at today, we are 25% down. And so the question is, are we just halfway there? So what was the Great Recession of 2008? Well, it was the most significant downturn since the Great Depression, and that's where it's got its term became the Great Recession. This describes the U.S. recession from December of 2007 to June of 2008, and also the following global recession all the way into 2009. So a lot of people believe that we're in a similar position, if not even a worse position. And I've had some of you guys in the comment section tell me that you have actually cashed out, that you've sold everything, that you're 100% into cash, and that you're gonna get back in no later than six to 12 months from now, which I actually think may be a fair question to look at. So should we all sell everything now and buy back later? That's gonna be what we're gonna tackle today. So with that question in mind, let's check out this time capsule news video, which is an overview of the 2008 Great Recession and see what similarities there really are. The signs were everywhere, but now it's official we are in a recession. The research group that makes that determination made it today and said the recession actually started a year ago. But the question now, when will it end? Wall Street is clearly worried the Dow plunged nearly 680 points today or 7.7%. Anthony Mason is our business correspondent. Anthony, last week's re big rally is now just a fond memory, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, what the market giveth, the market also taketh away, Katie. Remember that historic five-day rally, the biggest since 1933? Well, it ran into a bear today, and in one big bite, more than half of those gains were gone. For Wall Street, it was another case of whiplash. The markets haven't been this volatile in almost 80 years. For the past 50 days, the S&P 500 has whipsawed up and down an average of nearly 4% every day. That hasn't happened since the late 1920s. It's just one of these markets that's just floating back and forth and we're back on the downside. The latest slide, nearly 700 points, came as reports showed manufacturing activity hitting a 26-year low last month. And the economy was formally and officially declared in recession. The National Bureau of Economic Research confirmed what many already felt. The recession began last December and may be far from over. There is no single action the federal government can take to end the financial market turmoil and the economic downturn. Stocks staged a monster rally last week after President-elect Obama unveiled his new economic team, but the euphoria evaporated today. So basically, there's a lot of problems out there that uh, even though we have a great team coming in, it's not a magic wand that's going to help this economy. Many economists now believe this downturn will be the most severe since the recession of the early 1980s, which lasted 16 months and led to 7.5% unemployment and a record number of bank failures. Sounds familiar. So that was very interesting. And this is what we do know for a fact. We know that the markets have crashed. We're not in a correction. We are down over 20%. We're actually around 25%. They talked about volatility. It took around 12 months of heightened volatility before they got the big drop in 2008. Now we've had high volatility, but it will only be 11 months by October 29th. So I want you to remember that volatility measures fear. Like the comments, how long under this bearish environment will people basically watch their money slowly drain away before they capitulate and get entirely out? Well, that's what happened 12 months into heightened volatility back in 2008. People were in that 2008 pressure cooker for 12 months before they capitulated. And if we were gonna do the same thing under the same time frame, that would put us to the end of this November. In addition, they talked about manufacturing Manufacturing hitting a 26 year low in 2008. Now, so what's going on in manufacturing in 2022? Well, it was reported as follows industrial production and capacity utilization have surpassed pre pandemic levels mid year. A strong increase in new orders for all major sectors signal growth continuing in 2022. 
according to Deloitte projections based on the Oxford economic model, they are forecasting a GDP growth in manufacturing of 4.1% for 2022. So right now we've got 4.1% by the middle of this year compared to a 26 year low. That's not quite the same. All right, well then there was Harry Paulson, the former United States Secretary of the Treasury, who publicly declared in that video, and I quote, there is no single action that the federal government can take to end the financial markets turmoil. Basically, the ship was sinking and they threw in the towel. That, of course, preceded the big drop that was ahead of them. Fed Powell, in my opinion, is still fighting tooth and nail at this point to slow down inflation and address these markets. I also found it interesting that they compared the 2008 recession to the high inflation environment and the recession of the 1980s. Inflation hit a high of 14% in the 1980s and we are at 8.2%. Now the metrics have changed, but basically the inflation is really not the same. After the markets fell 20% in 2008 and hit the 200 day moving average, it took six months before the next leg down began. From that six month period, it dropped an additional 30% very quickly. So the simple case I made in my last video was that after the S&P hit the 200 day moving average, it rebounded all the way back up to the 100 day moving average, which was a 10% move up. So I wanna be clear with you guys, the markets are not going back to their all time highs, but are they going lower right now? That's the question that we're trying to tackle today. The question is, when will they go lower? Will it be in the month of October and will it be before the midterms on November 8th? That is the most important question. So no two recessions are gonna be exactly alike, but I'm comparing the current environment to 2008 because 2008 was the worst case scenario. That's why they called it the Great Recession. So the main point for today that I want you guys to reflect upon is that we have to trade each level ahead one at a time. The Stocks with Josh page is absolutely a community as well as a daily dialogue. And my goal is to make trading easier and for us to do it together. We are only one video, one conversation, and one trade away from a payday. And I don't want you guys to miss out because you walk away from the market. I've shared this story before with you guys about my very first big win in trading, and that was with the Apple stock. I had bought a thousand shares and I did an earnings call and I went from about $104 per share all the way up to 126. So I roughly made over $20,000 and I did it right before the earnings and right after the earnings, my account was up 20 grand. And I wanna tell you guys, it was such a funny feeling. I look back on it, the emotions were sort of really, you make $20,000 in a day when you've never done it before and it will make you emotional. I felt like I had robbed a bank. I literally like got up, closed my computer, you know, <laughs> You know, start looking around, you know, check the blinds type of a thing. I really felt like I had stolen the money. It was such a weird feeling. But that's the reason why I mentioned that is that really that was the turning point for me when I got completely hooked on trading and I knew that I was going to invest myself into it so that I could do my very best to master it as a skill. And I share that with you guys because of what I said a moment ago, you are only one trade away from changing your life. Okay, if you guys wanna connect with me more, you guys can find me on the Moomoo app. Download that link in the description and you guys can get yourself 15 free stock. And with a minimum deposit of $100, you can get six chances of stock valued up to $2,000 each. That's a limited and exclusive YouTube offer. All right, this Wednesday, October 19th, Tesla is reporting earnings. For the big risk takers, I think it's a buy Monday AM. Call options is what I'm looking at. A safer trade would be a vertical spread option, but a more profitable trade would be straight calls. I think it's possible that we could get a $10 move out of positive earnings and maybe a 6% move up. And personally, I'm gonna be thrilled if the futures are down Monday morning and giving me an opportunity to get an even better price. And on Monday or Tuesday, before earnings comes out, I'm gonna do a deep dive in the fundamentals and a technical breakdown of Tesla. Don't miss that video. Hit the subscribe and that notification bell. Peace and blessings, my friends. Take care.